Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do two problems problem number 174 and 175. Problem number 174, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. Problem number 174 is a straightforward problem and then we'll do 175. It says, find a fraction such that, such that if 2 is added to its numerator and 5 is added to its denominator, the fraction that we're looking for becomes 3 quarter. It reduces to 3 quarter. But if 3 is subtracted from both its denominator, both its numerator and denominator, it becomes 5 6. So we have a fraction such that if you were to subtract, if you were to take away 3 from both the numerator and the denominator, it becomes 5, 6. But if you were to add 2 to its numerator and 5 to its denominator, then it reduces 3 quarter. The question is, what is that fraction? Let's find out, shall we? So let's represent our fraction that we're looking for. Let, let, let our fraction be, let our fraction be, n over d. n represents the numerator, d represents the denominator. And now we can begin our work. So it says if 2 is added to its numerator, so here is our numerator n, if we add 2 to it, and if 5 is added to its denominator, here is our denominator, if you add 5 to it, what happens? It reduces to 3 quarter. So that's our first equation. We need two independent equations because we need to solve for two unknowns, the value of the numerator, the value of the denominator. And the second equation is going to come from second second sentence here. It says if 3 is subtracted from both, both the numerator and the denominator, so let's do that here. So here's our numerator, subtract 3 from it. Here's our denominator, subtract 3 from it. If you were to do that, our fraction becomes 5, 6. That's it. You simply have, we have to solve this very simple, these two very simple linear equations and we'll get our values that we're looking for, for the numerator, the n, and the d. Let's begin. Cross multiply, when we cross multiply, we get, we end up with 4 times n plus 2 equals 3 times d plus 5, 3 times d plus 5, open the parenthesis, we get 4 times n plus 8 equals 3 times d plus 15. You can leave it like this for the time being or you can work on it, it's up to you. Let's move on. Let's see what we find here first. Again, cross multiply, we get 6 times n minus 3. 6 times n minus 3 equals, would have to equal 5 times d minus 3. Don't waste your time messing with this thing right now until you know what you're dealing with here because that's what, what we find here is going to determine, is going to dictate what sort of work we have to put into it. So we get 6n minus 18 equals 5d minus 15. Let's see now. I see 4n here, I see 6n here. 3d and 5d blasted. So if you want to make the if you want to make the coefficient of the n the same, listen carefully. Here's 4, here's 6. The least common multiplier of 6 and 4 is 12. You're going to have to multiply this equation by 2 and this equation by 3. We could do that. Let's, let's do one more step. So, or, or, we can make the, or we can make the coefficient of d the same for both of them, in which case we're going to have to multiply this equation, the left-hand equation, by 5. 5 times 3 is 15. And multiply this equation by 3, and 3 times 5 is 15. And we can have the same thing. We can have 15d here. It's up to us. Let's work with n. Let's work with n. So, 4n equals, bring the four, uh, 8 to this side, we end up with 4n equals, 4n equals 3d, and bring the 8 to this side, it will become 7. And here, 6n, 6n equals 5d, and then bring the 18 to that side, it will become 3. Okay, let's begin. But let's multiply this side, this equation by 3 and that equation by 2. If we multiply this equation by 3, we can have to have 3 here. Multiply this equation by 2. And now we'll have 12 n here. This is 12 n. And since we're multiplying by 3, 3 times 3 is 9. 9 d plus 3 times 7 is 21. 
and here we have 12n equals 5 times 2 is 10d and 3 times 2 is 6. Now we have 12n here, we have 12n here, since they are both 12n, which means these two quantities, 9d plus 21, would have to equal 10d plus 6. Let's continue on top. So, 9d, 9d plus 21 would have to equal, oh, this is very simple, 10d plus 6, we could have finished it here. Because if you bring the 9d, if you bring the 9 to the that side, 10d minus 9d is going to be d, and bring the 6 to this side, 21 minus 6 is 15. Well, this is weird. This is, makes me nervous because when they talk about finding the fractions in these problems, fractions are represented in the most reduced form. And 15 is not a prime number, so we'll see what happens. Perhaps the bottom is the prime number. But otherwise, we'll have a problem. They cannot, both the denominator and the numerator, they cannot both be not prime numbers. Because if they were both not prime numbers, then there is a potential for reduction potential for reduction, not necessarily, but we'll see. Let's find out the n. What can be used to find out the n? What equation, which equation do you want to use for n? It really doesn't matter. Let's use this equation. n plus 2 over d plus 5. This is the one we are using here. d plus 5. d is 15. 15 plus 5 equals 3 quarters. Okay, I need the room again, I need more room, 15 plus 5 is 20, so multiply both sides by 20, and this is n plus 2, this is going to cancel out, and this 20 is going to cancel out with this 4, 5 times, 3 times 5 is 15, oh there you go, n plus 2 right here, n plus 2 equals 15, which means n equals 13, voila, so I told you that uh, it will most likely it will turn out to be a prime number because otherwise there is a potential for reduction the fractions have to be represented in the most reduced form, in the simplest form. Let's verify our work, shall we? Let's very quickly verify it. What can be verified? Let's do it right here, in the verification. Well, the problem tells us, the problem told us rather, it's no longer there, the problem told us that if you were to add, if you were to add 2 to the numerator the numerator we are claiming is 13, if we were to add 2 to it, and if we were to add 5 to the denominator, and the denominator we are claiming is 15, 15 plus 5, we end up with 15 over 20, 15 over 20 is indeed 3 quarters, which is exactly what the problem told us. So that works, let's do the second part. Second part tells us that if we take our numerator and denominator, which we are claiming of 13 and 15, and if you were to subtract 3 from both, 13 minus 3, and 15 minus 3, we end up with 10 over 15, and 10 over 15 is indeed 2 third. 2 third? This is 2 third. It's supposed to be 5 6. If we subtract 3 from both, oh, 15 minus 3 is not 15, 15 minus 3 is 12, and 12 is indeed 5 6. It works. It works. You want to do one more? Let's do one more, a different kind. Let's do one more problem, a different kind. But this one is done. That, that means, that tells us that our answer is correct. Our work is indeed correct. The fraction in question is 13 over 15. The fraction is, the fraction that we're looking for is 13 15. Let's do, let's do one more. says that we have a two digit number 175 a two digit number is such that 8 times 8 times the sum of its digits the sum of its digits equals the number itself. 
we go on to tell us that's going to be our first equation right there. That first sentence, when it's translated into the language of algebra, it's going to give us, it's going to yield our first equation. They go on to tell us that the difference between the number and the one formed by reversing its digits, if you were to reverse the digits, is by reversing its, well then the one form by reversing its digits is 45. The question is, what is that number? Find it. Let me change the marker. This marker is getting a little lighter. If I can find a decent one, just give me one second. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. I shouldn't have done that in the middle of the video. It's just, just when you try to find it in a hurry, it takes longer. There we go. There, a brand new one. So let's get going, shall we? Before we start with this problem, before we start with this problem, I want to remind you that this is not something new. We have done problems similar to this one, not problem, but problems similar to this one on several different occasions. And I would like you to watch, if you have not done so already, I would like you to watch number, problem number 65, problem number 91, problem number 111, problem number 122, and finally 168 to 171. As you can see, on eight, on eight different occasions, we have come across problems similar to this problem. 60, 168, 169, 170, 171. Four problems there. And the very first one we did was 65, 91, 65 and then 91, 111 and 122. In these problems, we learn how to represent the notion, the concept, the idea of a two-digit number. As a matter of fact, I believe in one or two problems, we also dealt with the situation of three-digit numbers. How do we represent a kind idea, the notion, the concept of a two-digit number using the language of algebra? For example, for example, let's, let's talk about 45 here. For example, if you want to represent 45, and if you're going to say let, let t represent let t represent the 10 digit and let u represent the unit digit, do we represent this number 45 as tu? The answer is no. Because tu, if you just write ab, ab in the language of algebra means a times b. So if you leave this as tu, that, that's just t times u. And t turns out to be 4 and u turns out to be 5. What you're representing here is a, is a, is a quantity of 20, not 45. How do we represent 45 by using these symbols? T represents a 10 digit, T represents the 10 digit, U represents a unit digit. How do we do it? Well, there's the answer. In 45, 45 is so called, 45 is so called because this 10 digit, why is it called the 10 digit? 4 is a 10 digit. Why is it called the 10 digit? Because it tells you how many tens it has. It has four tens. The reason why it's called 10 digit, because it tells you how many tens we have. Why is this called a unit digit? Because it tells you how many units we have. We have five units, five ones. 45 is made up of four tens and five ones. And uh, if we're going to use letter T to represent the number of tens, then this will be end up being T times 10. And if we're going to end up using letter U to represent the number of unit digit, then U times one, and this is how you represent a two digit number. Ten T times 10 plus u times 1. We can simplify this thing, we can, we, can, we can write this in a more elegant way if you like, more, more, more palatable manner if you like. T times 10 can be written as 10t and u times 1 is just u. So there is our two digit number that we're talking about. Once we understand this concept, this is what we have to understand. Without, without this, we cannot begin our work. Once we understand this concept, now, now we can start our story. So there are two digit number that we're looking for is right here, 10t plus u. Remember that I need the room so I have to raise it. Here we go. That's our number, 10t plus u. Let's begin our process, shall we? 
So we have a two digit number such that 8 times the sum of his digits. So the sum of the digits is going to be t plus u. Those are going to be the sum of the digits. And it says that if you were to take 8 times it, 8 times the sum of his digits equals, equals the number itself. The number itself is right here. 10t plus u. 10t plus u. Let's simplify it. We get 8t, 8t plus 8u equals 10t plus u. Bring the t to this side. 10t minus 8t is going to be 2t. And bring the u to this side. 7, 8u minus u is going to be 7u. Just leave it like this for the time being. We'll worry about what to do with it in a second after we have the second equation. The second equation, I don't want to erase this part, so I'm going to do it on the top. I don't want to erase the, the problems that you need to watch. So let's do it on the top. The second equation is going to come from the second census. It says that the difference between the number, the number is this right here, 10t plus u. 10t plus u minus the 1, 1 formed by reversing the digits. How do you reverse the digits? If you had a 45, if you had a 45, it would become 54. But how do we represent here? Oh, very simple. We write u in plus of t and we write t in plus of u. When you reverse the digits, instead of having instead of having t tens, instead of having four tens, we're gonna have five tens. Instead of having t tens, we're gonna have u tens. Ten times u. Instead of having u units, we're gonna have ten. We're gonna have t units. And the difference between the number, difference, difference right here, the difference between the number, which is this number right here, and the one formed by reversing its digits, which is this right here, is 45. Is 45. Is 45. There is our second equation. There is our second equation. Now we can raise this sentence so we have room. And we just work on it. This is a very standard equation that appears in every single problem of this nature, which is going to be just 9 and 9. You will see the whole equation is going to be multiple of 9. t minus t, because this is a minus sign here. 10t minus t is going to be 9t, you see. And then u minus 10u is going to be minus 9u. That equals 45. As you can see, the whole equation is always a multiple of 9. Since this is 9, this is 9, this is 45, let's divide the entire equation by 9. And we find that t minus u equals 5. t minus u equals 5. If t minus u equals 5, we know t, 2t is equal to 7u. 2t is equal to 7u. So why don't we multiply this equation by 2? Let's multiply this equation by 2. And we end up with 2t minus 2u equals 10. But 2t we know, 2t equals 7u. We know right here, 2t equals 7u. Let's put it in there. I'm going to erase this part. We don't need any of this now. 2t equals 7u. Let's put it back in here. So 7u minus 2u equals 10. 7u minus 2u is going to be 5u equals 10, which means u equals 2. Unit digit is 2. If unit digit is 2, we can figure out the 10 in a second. We know that 2 times t equals 7 times u. 7 times u, which is 2. u, which is 2. We have a 2 here, 2 here. Divide both sides by 2 and we're done. 10 digit is 7. 10 digit is 7. 10 digit is 7. Unit digit is 2. The number that we're looking for is 72. 10 digit and the unit digit number that we're looking for is 72. All we have to do now is to make sure that our work is correct by quickly verifying it. Let's do that. Let's do the verification here. I'm going to erase this part now. We don't need any of this. Let's do the verification. It says uh, a two-digit number is such that 8 times the sum of the digits. Well, we have 7 and 2. 8 times 7 plus 2. 7 plus 2 is 9. 8 nines are 72. There you go. There you go. 8 times the sum of the digits, 8 times the sum of the digits, which is 9, is the number itself. The number is 72. So that one works out. 
8 times the sum of the digit is indeed equal to the number itself. They further told us that if we would reverse the digits, the difference is 45. So if the number is 72, and if you reverse it, becomes 22, uh, 27. And that difference better be what the problem told us. The problem told us that the difference between the number itself and the one that is formed by reversing its digits is 45. And therefore, as long as this works out to be 45, we are in business. 12 minus 7 is 5. 7 becomes 6, and 6 minus 2 is 4. Therefore, what do you know? This is 45. Which means, which means that our word was indeed correct. I know.